Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Okay. Hi, I'm Cynthia Smith, and welcome to Upon This Rock Christian Ministry. It's a multimedia ministry, and I just want to thank... Oh, wait a minute. No, you don't have to do that. No, 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 go ahead. This is good. Because then they could decide how they're going to slice it in. We can do the chat in the studio and make it actually look good. I, I thought... Yeah, oh, you are? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you also have this backdrop, which you can't get anywhere else. You going that wide? Grace and peace and welcome. My name is Cynthia Smith, and I am here at the Motown Cafe. The Gospel Wow 1998 new release. And we're here with Upon This Rock Christian Ministry, and we're presenting uh, the presentation, the press conference that went on here today. And my reporter for today is no, 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 no. No, 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 I'm sorry. No, that was good though. That was excellent. Grace and peace and welcome. My name is Cynthia Smith and I am with Upon This Rock Christian Ministry, a multimedia ministry, and we're here at the Motown Cafe in New York City. And there is a 1998 Wild Gospel compilation that has just hit the market. And we're here covering the footage and live coverage. And the reporter for this night's event is none other than Cheryl Williams. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, Cynthia. How are you doing today? Oh, I am blessed, blessed, blessed beyond measure. So are you ready to do these? I am excited. Okay, I want you to, you know, go in there and just report on all the behind-the-scenes gospels you possibly can. Amen. It'd be my pleasure. All right. And it's exciting to be a part of Upon This Rock Christian Ministries. It's a wonderful multimedia um, company that's just bringing gospel to a new and higher height. In the, in, the, in the name of Jesus. And I'm just very blessed to be a part of it and to be a, blessed to be a part of any venture that you are doing. Well, I thank the Lord and I just bless his name. Amen. We can cut that. Hi, I'm Cheryl Williams and I'm here live at the Motown Cafe at Gospel Wow 1998. It's exciting to be here and we have a host of Yes, artists to interview, so stay tuned, stay with us, and stay plugged in. Hi, I'm Cheryl Williams, here live at the Motown Cafe with Upon This Rock Christian Ministry. And we're here today with the Wow Gospel 1998. It's an exciting event featuring virtue, Fred Hammond, a radical for Christ, and Hezekiah Walk and his choir. We're going to be interviewing Fred Hammond very shortly. You sang an anointed song. Tell oh, us, thank you. what do you have a new album coming out? Correct. Pages of Life. Amen. How is it different from the rest of the albums that you could produce? Well, it, it, it's focused a whole lot more on it's, it's relationship driven between people and God. Amen. The last albums, well, the first album, Inner Court, dealt with my experience with God. And I just kind of put it on tape for everybody to hear it. Amen. The Spirit of David gave my experiences in my relationship with God. Amen. This kind of deals with people's experience that I've met and, you know, in my life too. So it's like, this spells the pages of my life. Amen. What does the pages of your life say when it's... It, it ain't all over now. We all still we good, but That's right. the first this chapter of my life existed, you know, with praise. It existed with understanding where God was with me and how close He was to me. And Amen. at times when I I walked away from Him and I didn't I didn't do the things that He wanted me, He was still right there. You know how God is? He's just Amen. awesome, and that's what it kind of you know. Amen. That's where it's different. Amen. That's that's wonderful because what you're talking about is how you're able to be an effective witness. That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. And your relationship to um, your audience with your life. You know, for so long, a lot of people like to we stand on the we stand on the stages and we 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 give this image that we don't go through anything, that it's always victorious, mm -hmm. that we always walk in the all the ultimate amount of faith, and we don't. As believers, we don't do that all the time. 
we depend on the Holy Ghost. Amen. Every day. Day by day. And you know what? When we fall short and when we cut, when we are weak, Amen. that's when we depend on the strength of the Amen. Lord. Amen. You know what I mean? So Amen. it gives you that. If we always strong, why do we need God? You Amen. know, even we're talking about. It, I mean, we Amen. we never know. He can bring us out. Amen. And so therefore, my testimony won't be strong to a person that feels like, man, you don't know what it's like to be me. Mm. I grew up with no father. I grew up with this. And I can say, well, listen, I had the same testimony as you. Amen. And God has did some different things Praise for me in my life. Praise you know, so, you know, it's that, it's that vibe. So your music really is ministry behind all of that. It's a life. Music, if you will. It's a life. <laughs> I mean, basically what you see is, once again, my life put out on display. Amen. It's out on display for people to see and, you know. Amen. Now, many people consider you a forerunning gospel, contemporary gospel music, if you will. Where do you see this contemporary gospel music actually going into the millennium? Well, you know what? Contemporary just means current, mm -hmm. up to date. Mm -hmm. At one time or another, Mahalia Jackson was contemporary. That's right. Tommy Dorsey was contemporary. Mm -hmm. James Cleveland was even contemporary. Give us some history. But I think it's going to always be current sounding music. But I think what's happening now is that the root of the lyrics are getting stronger to understand that although the music may change and the hip hop sound may come and go and it may be something else tomorrow, the lyrics and who God, this ain't going to never change. Amen. Who God is will never Amen. change. Hallelujah. Now I could beat this on this right here and if I can make an album out of doing this, Mm. And somebody understand it? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it. Amen. If I gotta wear a gold suit like one of those for somebody to understand it, then that's what I'll do. I'm urban. I grew up in the urban community. I know about I know about urban stuff. Life. Life. So my I'm not gonna sound like Charlie Pride and Glenn Campbell. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna sound like somebody that come out of the hood. Mm -hmm. But my lyrics are gonna sound like Moses and David and Amen. Paul and, and Matthew and Luke and it's going to sound like them because it's, it's about the lyrics. It's, that's the gospel, not the music. Amen. So I think whatever's current in 2005, if God had, if Jesus had returned yet, just, you know, it's going to be Amen. that. Amen. Yep. I want to quote a scripture and I believe the Lord is going to use you mm. to be a witness to our viewers. Amen. And Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. It reads, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Mm. What does that mean to you? And how, what would you say to, let's say, a viewer who's watching in maybe Moscow or in um, Brazil who doesn't know how to grasp faith? Faith starts with a revelation of who God really is. God, you have to understand the, 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 the personality of God is that number one before the world was framed before time began he raised his hands and said i am god forever Amen. and that's the rule of all life Amen. so now you say now i'm here to serve that that person right there that, that that god right there that's who i serve and understand that there's nothing that this word the word has given me promises and then I have to just believe in them. So now faith, it means today's faith, yes. the faith of right now. It's like right now, I got a grasp on it. And you know what? Faith is like a muscle. And I kind of, you know, I kind of moving around here, but faith is like a muscle. And you have to use it. And faith is waiting to be used. It's never used up. It's never used out. You can't wear it out. You can't do It's like, you know, I can pick up this chair, but then I don't have enough muscle to pick up the spoon. No, no. Send it back out. I mean, I think there was a, another scripture where uh, Jesus says that a man doesn't come and have a servant and say, well, just fix me a little something to eat and then you go do your thing. He said, no, fix me something to eat and then go over there and wait till I send you to do something else. Mm -hmm. And when I do that, that's how faith is. Amen. It's like, let me do this and now let me move out in that and now let me move out in that. Stretching so it. it's like faith is continuous. It's just, it never gets weak, it never gets tired. That is the area that I'm trying to say in the area of uh, a new believer or somebody saying, you know, 
what can I do? Yes. Just keep the faith. Amen. Don't let it fail. Amen. No matter how bad it seems, keep it. Just keep it. Keep it. Keep it. I want to thank you so much. What an encouragement you have been. I'm sure to our viewers. God bless you. May thank continue you. to just anoint you and use you for the kingdom. This is Cheryl Williams with the none other than Fred Hannon. Thank you so much at Wild Gospel 1998 and upon this rock Christian ministries. Thank you. I'm Siobhan. My name is Ebony. And I'm Karima. And I'm Miguel. Wonderful. Ladies, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Nice to be, nice here. To be here. We're here at Gospel Wow 1998, and I understand you guys are on this fabulous new album that's coming we out. We are. We are. We've been blessed. Amen. You excited? Oh, yeah. Very yeah. excited. Amen. Tell us a little bit about the album and how you were able to contribute to it. Well, um, WOW 98 actually is a compilation album, and um, it includes all the best artists of um, 1997, all the best gospel songs. There's two CDs. One is a contemporary CD that has some of the more contemporary artists, and that's the one that we're a part of. Um, and it just has artists that have blessed us so much, Anointed, CeCe Winans, Donnie McClurkin, Amen. Fred Hammond, A Radical for Christ. I mean, I could take six, I could go on and on. And we're just really, really blessed to be a part of the project. And then the other um, CD is traditional, and it has some of the more traditional artists on it, Amen. like Shirley Caesar Amen. and um, Ken Spirituals, yeah. Sounds great exciting. Project. Tell me a little bit about where you see your careers going, ladies. You're in this business course of show business, <laughs> but how do you feel that you're able to minister? in your music, because you are singing gospel music, right? Right. Um, well, we're very fortunate, first of all, to be able to get the record deal, because that just, all of us are very ministry oriented, and, and um, the album is a way that we can get it, get the message out there faster, and cover a lot of area, you know, at the same time. So that was really a blessing for us, and we hope to be doing this until Jesus returns. Amen. Amen. So you have a goal in mind, yes. which is what? To spread the gospel? Yes. Everybody, Everybody music? music. Yeah. To as many people as we possibly can, and hopefully hasten Jesus' return. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And talk about how young people might find virtue an alternative to, let's say, you know, um, traditional, mainstream, you know, hard rock, if you will. Well, what's the difference, if you will, in how you're able to make an impact in this business? I think the difference is that we sing for Jesus. Amen. We uplift him in all that we do, the way we act, and what we say. Mm -hmm. So it's different because we sing about Jesus and his love for us. And the music that we use can um, catch everybody's attention, the young people that are out there and everything. But if, even if it takes the music to get them to pay attention to us, we don't have a problem with that as long as they get the lyrics and get the message out of it. And that, so there is a message to your music. Exactly. Yeah. Well. exactly. And there always the will be. Yeah, there always will be. I mean, that's a one thing that... Message. <laughs> yeah. There's a message to every song. Hopefully so, we're, yeah. we're giving a, a positive alternative. Yeah, because one thing, people always ask us, um, you know, your, your music sounds like you, you, know, you can hear it on the regular radio or whatever. And I don't know if that's, that might be a criticism from some people. Some people have a hard time with that, but we understand that young people, you know, we listen to music, and I say we because we're young as well. We listen to music that might not appeal, you know, to older people. They listen to a different type of music. And so there's, I mean, if you look at the lyrics, even in our CD, and we wanted them printed because it's straight ministry, it's biblical, it's, it's very strong, and there's no nothing watered down because we want people to understand that Jesus is there and loves you in a way that no other person can and if young people can get that and devote their lives to Christ and then minister to others then that you know works even better and we've done our job. Yeah, so you're spreading the gospel, you're spreading the good news, right? Now tell me about your leisure time. Are you guys involved in any kind of charities where you also spreading the gospel or is your music the main focal point right now? Um, well I personally um, just recently became an assistant coach <laughs> for a basketball team of young guys. Um, and also <laughs> next week I'm supposed to start with the Big Sister Program in Huntsville. And we as a whole, we're involved um, with an agency called Compassion International. And um, we haven't had the chance really yet to work as much with them as we want to, but we got involved with the program because um, they they have a USA focus and we went to one of the schools, they subsidize church schools and deal with young people and sponsor them all the way through college and um, so they learn about Christ and they also get that education. We're, all four of us are very passionate about young people and you know just trying to be there for them and be role models, positive role models for them. God. Young women with a vision, I'm so excited. 
But thank you for joining us, ladies. It's been such a pleasure. Audience, we have this fabulous virtue. Look out for them. Some exciting new things. And thank you, Upon This Rock Christian Ministries. We thank you so much for joining us. It's Cheryl Williams. It's been a pleasure. Much success to you and bless you all. Thank you. Amen. I'm sitting here with the fabulous Bobby Jones. Bobby, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. I'm, I'm delighted to be with you. Oh, it's such a pleasure again. Um, we're here at WOW Gospel 1990. Mm -hmm. It's so exciting here, so exhilarating. Mm -hmm. Tell me, uh, what's all the excitement about? Well, it's all about gospel music. I mean, we're here at Motown Cafe. It's a kind of an anomaly because usually gospel is never presented in these kind of settings, you know. But, uh, you know, the music uh, is very close. Gospel music comes from the blues, basically, other than lyrical. Musically speaking, that's what Thomas Darcy brought to the table. So then that part of it doesn't make it unusual. It's just the fact that we are in a basically secular situation, which is always a great challenge for God's people, right? Amen. Amen. <laughs> and it was wonderful. It was extremely successful. Amen. Who were some of the artists featured here today? Well, Fred Hammonds and Radical for Christ, Hezekiah Walker, Love Fellowship, Anointed and Virtue Wonderful. were the presented artists for the two-day event that we've had here. Great. Uh huh. Fabulous. And uh, the audience's response was even better than it was for any, any other music. Because <laughs> yeah, gospel is on the rise. Gospel is here, yeah. Tell me about what do you feel the trend is in terms of gospel? Where do you see it going? I think the trend for gospel music is going to continue to uh, spread throughout the world. Because of the message, people are looking for something new and fresh and a different way to live their lives. So, you know. It's, it's going to keep going. Well, Europe is big now, you know? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, basically, the contemporary side of gospel, because they, they don't know the history and they don't know the, the older singers and what the base was. But in America, it's going to get big, continue to get bigger Amen. as well. Thank you so much for joining us. But I have one more question for you before we go. Okay. Now, you have a highly successful show that's been running. Well, it's thank been you. a blessing to me. <laughs> thank you. Ministry-wise, where do you see yourself going in regards to the Bobby Jones show? Well, the show itself, uh, I think, will, con will continue to go with BET and into other general marketplaces. I'm looking at Box. Uh, right now, and uh, Warner Brothers, they, they are interested in, in gospel music, and we'll see what happens with that, And uh, but the off-spins from the show is even greater because I'm able to put, put together a conglomerate of those people who run gospel music, all the record label executives, all of the artists, uh, the people who produce gospel music television, we all meet once a year Amen. to discuss the growth of our music. Beautiful. And so we can take control of it. You know, if you look Amen. around, somebody else will catch on that it can make money and they'll spend the money and have it just like rock and roll. I heard on the television the other day somebody talking about showing me all these people and they talking about they're the king of rock and roll. Rock and roll? They wouldn't even own rock and roll when we were really doing it on the black side. So we are not going to let that happen with gospel music. Amen. We're going to be in control of our own music and our Amen. destination. Amen. Praise right. God. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. I'm sitting here again with Bobby Jones taking control. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much. All right. Hi, I'm Cheryl Williams, and I'm sitting here with Mr. Jazzy Jordan, VP of Marketing at both Verity and Jive Records. It is such a pleasure to have you here today, sir. Pleasure's all mine. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, certainly. Uh, we're here at the WOW Gospel 90, 1998. Tell us a little bit about this event and how you were involved. We uh, developed the marketing committee, which I headed up to um, establish new, if you will, um, areas for gospel to grow and I call my friends at the Motown Cafe Tracy Jordan we always play this trick on one another since we both have the same last name that we're uh, really sisters and brothers and <laughs> Michael of course is our cousin you know <laughs> so I called I called Tracy up and we talked about this and she said you know it would be really a great idea let's do it and we decided to have a gospel brunch which we had on Sunday and we that decided is. to have the press conference here today and that. from that now we're talking about maybe perhaps doing some other things here on a weekly basis for gospel. I say it was highly successful, would you? Oh, it was tremendously <laughs> successful, yes. Tell us about some of the artists and how you involved with the artists that were here in the venue today. Well, today we had, in the house we had Anointed, we had Virtue, Fred Hammond and Radical for, Radical for, 
Fred Hammond and Radical for yes. Christ. We also had Hezekiah Walker. And uh, yesterday we had uh, the same artist to perform, you know, absolutely free of course, because this is a, promo a promotional event. And what's great about it, all these artists can be found on the CD. It, it includes everybody you can possibly imagine, such as Shirley Caesar, Stomp, it, everything you want in gospel music that's been, uh, put out in 1997. It's on this album. So you're talking about traditional and contemporary, all yes. on one compilation. Yes. Praise God. So there's a little bit there for everyone. You put it in, you hit the button, you leave it alone, you go <laughs> do what you have to do, you come back later on and say, wow, is that the same CD? Wonderful. It's great. Amen. Well, that says a lot about gospel music. Gospel Doesn't music it? is growing by leaps and bounds. The month of February, you can turn to A and E. And when you tune to A&E, you'll see a piece on Wild Gospel because they're going to run over 60 spots or so promoting this project along with their magazine biography. Fabulous. Revlon Corporation have stepped up and said, you know what, we want to take some of these Wild Gospel CDs and every time we do an event, we want to give those out to the public, Amen. which they purchase. So it's really working. It's just spreading. Amen. So you're saying that um, the mass appeal is growing? The good news is spreading. Amen. That's what I'm saying. Praise Him. That's the what it's all about, right? Yes. So, I'm also interested in knowing, um, we discussed the trends and where it's going, but how do you play a viable part in the industry as the VP of Marketing? Well, since I have an opportunity to work with such artists as R. Kelly, you know, the recorder of I Believe I Can Fly, yes. and I re work with uh, artists like Joe, and I work with a lot of different secular artists. I have an opportunity to meet people like a Tracy Jordan at Motown Cafe. Yes. I have an opportunity to meet people like Elaine McLean, you know, from Revlon. I have an opportunity to meet all these folks because it's much easier to get in the door a lot of times when you have secular artists than yes. when you have gospel artists. So now, taking those contacts and utilizing those contacts for gospel. So. My opportunity for gospel music is to let that good news spread everywhere. Amen, amen. So it's tremendous. Is there a difference in a marketing strategy with gospel than it is in secular and contemporary music? I don't think that the marketing so much is different. I think that sometimes the promotion is different because radio, gospel radio, is not quite on the same scale as secular radio because any given record that's a gospel release that's only been played on gospel records, you're not going to get 40 plays a week. You you know, you might get 40 plays a week, but it'd be on 40 different radio stations, where in a secular, you can get 40 plays on one station. Does so, that affect dollars? Oh, no question, because, you know, repetition is what sells records. Right. You know, when people hear a record over and over and over, they say, wow, I love this record. This record is great. It. I have to have it. <laughs> but, you know, if you hear it once every Sunday, and, you know, not to take anything away from a gospel radio station, but when they say they're playing in heavy rotation, they may give you two or three plays a week because you know what? That's all they can do. Right. That's the only, only, that's the only uh, time they have. But in a secular radio station, you get those 40 plays, people hear it, they know it, all of a sudden that melody gets in your head and you, uh, oh, you're bouncing to it, you're washing dishes, you're still singing along with the song. Same thing can happen in gospel if it has the exposure. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure is mine. Thank you so much for explaining to us where the trend is going, how you personally feel it's evolving, and it seems like there's um, a rise in gospel music, and I'm excited about it. No question. I mean, I think that Kirk Franklin has opened a lot of doors, and we're going to kick the rest in. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
And that's what this whole thing is about. It's not about saying who's doing this or what you can do or what this person can do. It's about understanding that I was lost. And God, he just kind of ordered my steps. And that's why this song means so much to me. That with all the excuses and with all the time I could choose to fail, the word of the Lord just keeps coming back to me and says, Hello,
Teresa Hairston has Gospel Today, which is a fabulous magazine, life, Christian lifestyle that keeps us informed, along with Miss Lisa Collins from Billboard Magazine and other projects, LA Focus. These are two of the powerhouses for the print sources. Another one is coming and doing a wonderful job, Sheila Bell, over here at this table from uh, um, uh, Richmond, Virginia. Gospel Times to cover that. Then there are television personalities, people around who make this uh, industry for us go forward. 
which Dr. Thomas A. Dorsey is known as our founder of gospel music. And I think the great thing, uh, Jazzy, about us being here at, at Motown Restaurant is the relationship between blues and gospel, instrumentally that is. Because soul music is soul music, we change the words. But the rhythms are basically the same and in the genre. That's why Kirk Franklin's and God Prophet is New Nation is such a hit today. It's soul music, set to the lyrics of, uh, of a Christian experience, our Christian lifestyle. So when Do Dr. Dorsey started in the early 1920s with gospel music, I'm sure he's very, he would be very proud to see what has happened with this music as of today. It really has grown into being very commercial, very spiritual, very uplifting, very heartwarming. He started with two females helping him out. Yes, the women are always in place. Sally Martin and William May Ford Smith were the two ladies who drove this music with sheet music for 10 cent a copy. And now today, here we are at Motown Restaurant featuring the W.O.W. Gospel 90, 1998 project with, if you see the sign, the year's 30 top gospel artist and song. So naturally you're going to see a feature or a special of this on Bobby Jones Gospel because we got to let the world know that we have major sponsors like Revlon, like Virtue's going out to do that, and all the wonderful things that go to make any music develop. So you being here today are a part of a new trend set for gospel music. Now if your hands are free, give yourselves one, all right? You're part of history today. <laughs> best songs of 1997, the top 30 records. Any artist you can imagine that's singing the gospel music is a part of this package. We're going to do this year after year after year after year. This is a really very exciting news to me. I have to take this time to just not only talk about this project, but thank the people that's been a part of this to make this happen. We've had and hard-working A&R committee that helped to put this together because these people had to work so very, very diligently and very hard to come up with the right songs that make, would make people want to have this record. You know, it's one thing to just to say, well, let's just slap it together. Well, we don't do things like that. We wanted to make sure this would be ideal for whatever anyone wanted to know or wanted to do about gospel because this is the beginning. This is the best. So our a and committee worked very hard to put this together. Then we had our marketing committee that worked very hard to pull ties together with a and, a &E, uh, Television, with Redline, of course, as we talked about, and you'll hear more from them, Gospel Today. So many people have come forward and said, okay, we'll be a part of this. All of our chain stores said, hey, this is a great record, we have to have it. John P. Key. Fred Hammond that you're going to hear from, Hezekiah Walker. All the names are here, all the songs are here, and it's not like a lot of records you buy, it's a cut that was never released anywhere before. This is the best. With no further ado, I'd like to bring to you a young woman that's worked very hard with us to make this possible. She represents, to me, a corporation that believes a corporation that believes not only in gospel music, but what we're trying to do. In name of Clean, would you please join me from Red Line? All right, y'all there? You full? Yeah. Okay. Well, we just like to thank. Um, I'd just like to say that it's an honor and a privilege for us to be a part of the Wild Gospel 1998. It's a. Uh, it's so good because we are amongst. People, uh, singers that we have admired and loved over the years. It's just a great pleasure. How many of you out there know that we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us? Amen. How many know that when we say the name of Jesus, things start happening? Amen. Demon who is power, strongholds are broken. Nobody can agree with me? It's called Through Your Name, and we hope that it was you and it's with us. And we want you to put your hands together. It's a slow groove, but it's a groove, and if you can feel it, and if you can hear it, come on and put your hands together.